Does cannabis help sleep? The short answer, it does. There are really dozens of reasons why people are gonna have a problem falling asleep. And let's be fair, a lot of people now are turning to the idea of using cannabis. Well, before you jump into that, there are several key constituents that impact sleep that I wanna educate you on so that you know exactly what you're doing if this is something that you wanna do. So remember, inside of the cannabis plant, we can break it down in several different ways. The psychedelic property is something called THC or Delta 9 THC. Many people have also heard of CBN, also something called CBD, uh, also something called CBG. Those are kind of the main constituents of cannabis. Now, there's also a secondary uh, part, which are called terpenes. Anything that is a flowering plant that has a smell to it has a terpene associated with it. So when you smell cannabis, it oftentimes has a pretty distinct smell to it. Those are the terpenes that are coming from the plant itself. Believe it or not, those can actually also affect your sleep. So we're gonna talk a little bit about terpenes. And then by the way, there are certain cannabis strains. Uh, cannabis comes in two main categories, kind of like wine comes in red and white. Cannabis comes in indigo and sativa. Those are two of kind of the biggest ones that are out there. So what are the effects of THC on sleep? THC appears to be the cannabinoid, that's what they're called, cannabinoids, that play the most active role in altering sleep architecture um, and the time spent in specific stages of sleep. THC-rich strains of cannabis are most closely linked to reductions in REM sleep and increases in deep sleep. So we know it's got sedative effects, but guess what? We still need REM sleep. So we know THC helps with the deep stuff, but seems to lower on the REM stuff. Different strains of cannabis are actually higher in THC, will generally be more sleep inducing. But I want you to take note, too heavy a concentration of THC can lead to next day grogginess. Remember, cannabis data has demonstrated mixed, but arguably net positive results for THC being helpful for sleep. But once again, you, you wanna use this as a medicine. It's not about partying and getting high and getting stoned and then falling asleep. As I say with alcohol all the time, there's a really big difference between going to sleep and passing out when you're using alcohol. The same holds true with cannabis. There's a really big difference between going to sleep and getting stoned. Some of the data out there shows that there's a decreased time to fall asleep. So for folks out there who are having difficulty with anxiety pre-bed, this could actually be something that could be helpful. Also, there's been some data to suggest that it lowers the amount of time that people wake up after they've initially fallen to sleep. Now, other work uh, did not replicate these findings. So guess what? We have an imbalance in the literature. So we've got some people who say, hey, it's not that big of a deal. We have other people who say, you know what? It didn't do the things that we thought it could do. So we're still in the midst of trying to learn more about THC. Now, other things that we wanna think about is nightmares. So here's what's kind of interesting. Back in 2009, uh, there, it was reported that a synthetic THC reduced nightmare presence and the intensity and increase a participant's hours of sleep per night. Well, if you think about it, that kind of makes sense, right? Because nightmares occur during REM sleep, and we know that THC lowers REM sleep. So it makes a lot of sense that if you have disturbing dreams or nightmares, a product that contains a small amount of THC could actually be quite helpful. Let's go on to the next one, which is one you've probably heard almost as much about, which is CBD. All right, I wanna be very, very clear. CBD, which is uh, called cannabidiol, um, is not a mind-altering substance, okay? It does not do anything other than promote relaxation. It's gained a lot of attention lately, um, and it's usually used to reduce anxiety, relieve pain, and promote some type of mental focus and clarity. Um, it can actually promote alertness in some, in some uh, studies as well. So when you think about CBD, notice it doesn't actually do anything for sleep. So one of the things that we know that CBD does is it helps reduce anxiety, and we know that it helps reduce inflammation or pain. So if you've got a sleep problem that's due to anxiety or due to pain, CBD might help one of those, which then helps your sleep. But I wanna be clear, CBD in and of itself has almost no research to show that it is making people feel sleepy. It's doing the other thing, which is lowering anxiety and lowering pain. Now there is one that has been shown to do something, and that's called CBN, or what I call CB nighttime. This actually does have some very powerful sedative effects. CBN is oxidized THC. When the plant is blooming and the THC is there, if it gets exposed to oxygen for periods of time, it begins to oxidize and lose a lot of its power. And it turns into a new molecular structure called 
CBN. What's so cool about CBN is there's actually now data to suggest that there's a whole host of information out there on CBN being helpful for sleep. Now, I wanna go back to CBD um, only for a moment because it's just become so popular out there. So one of the things that a lot of people don't know is that the dosage of CBD can change the effects of CBD. As an example, a low dose of CBD can have a stimulating effect, but a high dose of CBD can have a relaxing effect. I also wanna teach everybody a, an interesting little point here, which is many people when they're trying cannabis for the first time, um, or they're not an experienced cannabis user, they get too stoned. Because quite frankly, their system isn't used to having any THC in it. And maybe they took a little bit too much to begin with. CBD can actually change that effect and reverse it. So for folks out there who may have tried a gummy or uh, a tincture or something along that, those lines and felt, oh my gosh, I felt stoned going to bed, actually using pure CBD can lower that down quite a bit and make you feel not stoned at all, relaxed and falling to sleep. Going back to CBN, this is where it gets really interesting. So some of the indications show that CBN is a sedative um, in, in vivo research, so that's in mice. We've also seen uh, CBN sedative effects are amplified when combined with THC. So if you have a little bit of CBN and a little bit of THC going together, guess what? They seem to do a lot better than just THC by itself. But there is, at this point, a lack of scientific research into uh, really being able to dedicate everything towards using just CBN. Now, I did mention these things called terpenes. Remember, that's the aromas that come from it. You know, an orange or a lemon has got terpenes, just like cannabis has terpenes. And these are really the aromatic molecules that cannabis has created for smell and taste. There are several that actually have effects on your sleep. So one is called myrcene. Uh, this has actually been shown to have sedative effects. Uh, Carophylline, I hope I'm saying that right, it helps actually relax people from an anxiolytic standpoint and from an analgesic standpoint. So it lowers anxiety and it seems to lower pain. Limoline, uh, which actually comes from lemons, uh, believe it or not, helps reduce anxiety and stress and may have some antidepressant effects, increase serotonin levels in the brain and may actually reduce insomnia in some patients. Linolol is another one and that lowers anxiety and depression symptoms, increases adenosine. Remember, adenosine is that neurotransmitter that increases uh, your sleepiness factor, uh, that can help as well. So looking for a strain, for example, that has limoline in it, that has CBN in it, that has CBD in it, and a little bit of THC, now you can start to see the recipe, right, is starting to come together. I wanna be clear about a few things. Number one, cannabis should be used for sleep in the right type of person. I am not your doctor. You need to consult your doctor before you begin taking any supplements, or make any changes to your existing medication or using cannabis. This is not medical advice. Remember, cannabis can be helpful in bringing about sleep. It does have some side effects that you need to know about. One of them is next day grogginess. This happens especially with higher end THC strains. So when you go into the dispensary and you look at a strain and it says that it's you know 85%, 90%, 95% THC, those are very high THC strains and they can make you feel very groggy the next day. Overuse of those high THC strains can also produce dry mouth, um, obviously some level of euphoria, and by the way, increased appetite. Kind of the last thing that you wanna do before bed is if you're using, let's say, a cannabis tincture and it gives you the munchies and then you go eat, now you're really not gonna sleep. So you really wanna do yourself a favor and keep those high THCs much, much lower. After extended use, of course, you could have possible withdrawal symptoms that could change your mood or feelings, and you may even need over time to increase the amount of THC because it might not be affecting you the way it once was. Now, falling asleep, staying asleep, and waking up refreshed, that's kind of what we're looking for here. And what's interesting is inside your body, you have something called an endocannabinoid system. This is biology here. This isn't something that we, we just happen to find. This is actually a complex signaling system in the body that was found by cannabis researchers in the early 1990s. We're still trying to fully understand the entire endocannabinoid system, but so far we know that it plays a role in regulating a range of functions, including sleep, mood, appetite, memory, even fertility. So when you're looking at this entire endocannabinoid system and you're starting to wonder, why is my body got an endocannabinoid system in it if it's not supposed to maybe have some cannabinoids in it? From a biological perspective, there's a few things we understand. One is 
They're using the same pathways as many of the sleep pathways like melatonin. Number two, we do have data to show that THC at low levels can actually be quite helpful for increasing slow wave sleep. But if it's too high, then it's gonna lower REM sleep, which we need to be a little bit careful of. So I think we're starting to learn more and more about what to do. So now what I'm gonna do is give you my formal recommendations. If you're going to try to use cannabis to help you get a little bit better sleep, here's what I'd like you to do. Number one, let your doctor know. You really need to be upfront with your doctor so that they know what's going on and that what's going on in your system. You could be on, let's say, a medication that could interact uh, with cannabis, or let's say that it's one of those uh, preparations that's got cannabis and a few other things in it. Some of those things could interact with any medications you might be taking. So do yourself a favor. Step number one, let your doctor know. Uh, the goal is to go to sleep, not to get stoned, all right? So at the end of the day, we're just trying to have a light drift off into sleep. You shouldn't be having these like whole body experiences and things like that. It should be very light and it should be something that you could actually work into your evening routine. You should be using a product that has low levels of THC, high levels of CBN, and CBD, again, looking for that balancing act. Do me a favor, avoid vaping. As a doctor, it's really hard for me to tell anybody that it's a good idea to vape. But what I will tell you is if you decide to use a cannabis product in the middle of the night, I have uh, okayed vaping in that instance because basically people are grabbing it, taking one quick um, toke, and then going back to sleep. And that is a much easier preparation than finding a bottle, lifting your head, dropping droppers. That's, that's a little bit too much for people. Now, some preparations will also include melatonin, lavender, chamomile. So be careful in case you have allergies or possible medication interactions like melatonin interacts with antidepressants. Also, at the beginning of the night, use a gummy or a tincture to get the appropriate effect in the appropriate time. Again, I'm not a fan of vaping, especially when it comes to using cannabis. Keep a glass of water by your bedside as it's probably likely that your mouth is gonna get dry in the middle of the night. And if you get the opportunity, um, we know that cannabis will help you sleep. But by the way, I have a video all about creating the ultimate wind down routine. So check it out right here. This is Dr. Michael Bruce, the sleep doctor, wishing you sweet dreams.